Hello everyone, welcome back to the Toilet Podcast, I am your host Andre Mel, here today with Zacta, as Hold per on. the bi-weekly uh, rotation. No, every so fortnight. Attempted bi-weekly rotation. Now, you know, let's just jump right into it, because you know, the pleasantries. Uh, the pleasantries are the best part. You have pleasantries? Fair point. I got unpleasant trees. I got... In fact, I got zero trees, actually. I was going to say, yeah, I have no trees. There's no trees, no. There's no trees around. Pleasant or unpleasant, we have none of them. I'm a little pleasant today. I don't think I've let it too much gas. I'm pretty pleasant. I'll tell you that. That is a plus over here in this uh, household. Um, no. What I was going to start off with is writing Toa. Writing Toa. Like, with writing a Bongo story. Obviously because uh, they are not humans. No. And they do not interact with humans or anything other from this no. world. Which instantly makes it, at least from my perspective, a lot harder to get into the mindset of a Toa. A being that can live for hundreds of thousands of years with powers of beyond uh, imagine. It's harder to get into that mindset. I think you're overthinking it. You gotta think of hero. But you know, duty. But, you know, kind of what way you do. Because this is something, you know, that did change with Bionicle was in like the early... 2001, you could say mostly what it is that they are shown to be, like, again, the powerful immortal beings, more seen from the villagers' perspective. Most of the media doesn't actually show, like, you have, like, Minog, which sees them as, you know, these, like, no, powerful, like, you know, beings that's like, oh my gosh, we're just the middle of the villagers, but you're, like, the protectors, like, you know, they're powerful. Yeah. But you don't really get more of the Toa side of things outside of really the comics even the book doesn't really get into much of the uh well the book's more like just people to figure out like well what are we who are we but you know it's like when the i would say that the way you write like a team of toa it's like what because both you and me have had experience writing toa you've sure. had your comic and i'm, I'm sure, sure you've done and i'm writing. sure you've done at least a couple short stories of toa i know you have at least one and I'm sure you got more mm-hmm. than one. I have several short stories and started writing a the a book for my main cast, Toa. And one thing I've always had a hard time is just like writing. Like, don't get I'm not a great writer to begin with. Of any person. I don't claim to be a great writer either. And for the most part, usually if I write for mm-hmm. a character, most of my Bongo stories are short stories. Which means you don't have to go too much into depth outside of... Like, outside of, like, maybe that one specific little aspect of this or that. But, like, getting into, like, making a full-length book. Like, if we're saying that's, like, you know, 60, 200 pages, the kind of length of book I'm thinking of. Like, how do you get into the mindset of a Toa? Outside of, okay, you could go the route of, you know, it's all about duty and such. But do you kind of go the more the route of the duty as a sense of, great with great power comes great responsibility duty? Do you kind of go more to duty sense of, well, this is my job. This is what I'm going to do. This is just what I do from day to day. This is just really what my job is. Or what, you know? Boy, if you wanted advice, we didn't have to do a podcast with us. No, uh, I need your advice. <laughs> uh, I don't think it really matters what their reasoning is. I think it comes down to the character you've instilled in the person. The well, reasoning has a lot down to figuring out the character, you know, like, getting in depth into the characters. Like, what I have, motivates you? I have the one character, Jaka, you know, he's all about the fame and glory. But most of my Toa, I don't really think about what they're... We're Toa. It is our duty. It's following the, the message of the Great Spirit. I more focus on what's the motivation for the villains. What do they want that would cause reason for conflict? Well, I feel like motivation is needed both for the villains and the heroes in a large sense. Or even just, like, the interactions between the Toa. Like, for me, at least, I, I feel like I need just a little bit of um a guiding force with, like, the Toa, especially if they're new Toa. Like if you're running new Toa, why are they basically doing what they do? It's like, you could just be like, oh, yes, there's always the destiny thing. Like, I'll see, yes, that is a reason, well, but... typically you aren't you aren't selected to be a Toa. Well, you're telling me all, to... all six Toa have the same reason of, oh, well, it's our destiny. I guess we're going to do it like this. Uh, let's look at Legends of Metro Nui as an example. They had the burden of becoming Toas, and they understood what this means, and... They begrudgingly said, let's prove ourselves worthy of being told. Well, remember, if you read the books, I'm pretty sure, Neil mm-hmm. Lily says that once they find Matt, like, a leak on, he was planning to go back to his his work. I get another He was claiming to that. use... Well, he wasn't claiming that he's like, if he had it his way, like, he'd done things that he would have used that Toa store as a door stopper. 
And you can be like that, but you know, clearly they found a way to become Toa and stay Toa. But they know. I was thinking about it because, like, but the the, po- the point I'm thinking is, is like, tr- can you get into the mindset of someone who you're not a person who follows destiny or duty as a human? I am also not a person who's ever been in a romantic relationship. Yet I can find ways to slough through that in stories. I I don't. I've read any stories, so I don't know how trash that is. And that's why you said slough. But like this, the, the the roundabout way I'm looking at this is like, if you write what you know, or at least you can have like secondhand experience from, or such like you know, with when it comes to storytelling, you're kind of pulling from the stuff you know. And I look at Bond was going, how do I get behind this? And honestly, there's a way of basically not worrying much about motivations and more just having the events play out and such. I don't tend to think too much about character motivations when I write my story, unless that's the specific purpose of the story. But most of my stories aren't intended to be like these big character-driven stuff, so I just write the story and see where it takes me. And some characters I might have in my mind beforehand, but others kind of just develop. I mean, also, I would say most of my cases, I haven't mm-hmm. gone too deep into character reasonings for it. But like even then, it's just kind of like the... If you're a Toa... Like, what's your motivation to keep doing what you're doing? Because it's, let's be honest, my point is, like, if, you know, if you have a group of people and they're all of the exact same motivation, it'll be very boring. I think if you're a Toa, you just have this general understanding that you're supposed to be a Toa. And most tend to abide by that social expectation of, okay, we become Toa, our duty is to be Toa. And uh, let's be honest, in fairness, most Toa probably have a Turaga or other Toa to sort of guide them in the path before they can kind of just manage themselves unsupervised. True, true. The Toa met you were unfortunately cut off from their mentor figure a little early and kind of had to work together begrudgingly. And the thing about Bongo stories, most of the Toa we've seen, outside of like the Toa man in the first like couple years, I feel like they've all been put in like doomsday scenarios where it's like you don't have time to question the world's in danger and we're the only ones who can do it. And that's about a very superhero we uh, sort of motivation, it I would say. It helps. Because, like, let's be honest, Nika, they kind of just got zapped into tone. They're like, well, we are the only ones around. We may as well do it. The Toa Nuvar. To be fair, their mission. To be fair. To be fair. To be fair. To be fair. To be fair their mission didn't really change as or Toa or not. To- being Toa just honestly helped them along. True, true. Do you think the Mask of Light would have still worked if Matoro wasn't Toa? If I they didn't turn it to Matoran or Toa? Uh, er, this is where predestined, this is where destiny Because this is an intelligent mask. This must be like, I'll do the work for you. You just have to be willing to give yourself. Well, I would feel like it probably would, because... Normally, I was going to say Matoran can't use masks or shouldn't, but this mask doesn't require you to be able to use a mask. It basically it just, just requires it. you to accept your fate and be done with I it. I feel like it would probably work either way, because let's be honest, it was most Toa's destiny. He was destined to do this. And someone like Karzadi got in the way of that destiny and kept him from being a Toa, you know, shenanigans and all that. There's always those possible Side shenanigans. Trips. Putting procrastination real bad for destiny. Mm. But I guess I'm not saying my idea about character motivations... The more other one that I've kind of come to realize is, like, how do you portray your team of people doing stuff? Because I realize there's a few different ways you can basically write a team of Toa as how they are. One, you can go the route of, you know, the very much sibling brotherly where it's like, okay, you know what? We are all the same family. We are one, you know, kind of unit. It's like, let's be honest, you act differently between your friends and your family. I feel like most Toa teams, if they're around long enough, will eventually become family. But the beginning, if you weren't friends before, it's probably always going to be a little rocky. It's like it's because your co-worker. this is the thing is, I look at the Tomata as a family. You know, basically, at least in the, how the way that they respect each other, where it's like, yeah, you get on my nerves, but you're my brother at the end of the day, you're my brother. While the Toa Metro, I see more like as a dysfunctional group of people, like, People grew, basically end up being like, like a class, science like, basically experiment. Cl- like let's say you have like a, a school project that you get randomly stuck with a bunch of other people. You might know a couple like um, professionally, and you kind of get stuck to each other. And eventually, you kind of just by the end of the story, you just become friends. Like I see the Toa Metro as friends at the end of things, while the Toa Mad I just see as very much a 
family unit where it's like, you know what, we're, we're much more of a, like, blood relation in the total matter, while the Mets drew seem much more by uh, circumstance. They both seemed like families to me at the end. When they got over their their issues with each other, learned to work together, and just learned to accept each other, it felt like, to me, that they were becoming more of a family, I mean, whereas before they were more like co-workers or... Yeah, co-workers. Or complete and utter strangers. And honestly, with that co-worker thing is the reason why my brain kind of thought about all this. Because I know I mentioned it to you, and I mentioned to um, uh, Eck, basically, off-camera and such, that the way that I've always had a hard time trying to write my specific team, that I can never figure out the exact interaction that, like, the way that, because from my point, well, there was always, you know, a lot of disgruntled disargu uh, arguments amongst the they group. They are not. But I was always come to the point where I'm like, why do you guys tolerate each other? Or like, how do you guys end up doing it? And the realization came was like, this very much comes down to co-workers. You don't necessarily have to like your co-workers. But at the end of the day, you all have to this work with each other. This is your job. Other. That's what it is. Like, they treat it more as, at least some of them treat it as a job. The way they see each other is like, yes, you annoy the crap out of me. That's never going to change. But we have to work with each other, so I will tolerate you. Off the clock, we'll go different areas and whatever. I won't be spending time with you the outside of what we're doing. If you help, we will be there. Until then, we will be apart. And, like, that's where I see it very differently than, like, the all the Toa teams that at least were in the canon Bionicle story. Because the... Actually, well, if you really want to get a group of friends, that would be the Toa Mar Ma Mar uh, Iniko and Mari. Yes. That was all Takanuva's friends yeah. group. Now, let's see, yes. Huki may not be directly um, Jao's friend, right? In, like, a normal sense, but Takanu is the central friend amongst all these other guys. He's the hub friend that everyone goes to his house to party. And so everyone knows each other. Takanu would throw a good party. All right, of course, you got, you always, with every group of, like, friends, you got the one couple. You got Hallie Jalo over there, you know. Then Huki inviting Maku. Unfortunately, she did not come with the rest of the tour. No, she was busy. But it's like, the, to the, that team I do very much see as, like, the way I describe their interaction with each other. I was like, yes, they are friends. They are a friend group. Who all became Toa together. They all, you know, grew up. They're not like, like yes, you have like all people may know, you know, professionally, you know, know each other. Like, you got Jala and Kong who are both leaders of their respected, uh, um, what's it called? Force. So, you know, yeah, you know, they all say they had other stuff, you know, in common. But like, no, this is a friends group who then became Toa. While the Toa Metru are like, again, that, that, that group of students who by the end of the year, at the end of the semester, are now become friends. By circumstance, well, it's all mad to me. Literally, just seem like siblings, where it's like there's a bond that's just deeper than we get along. It's like, yes, Liwa may annoy the like Puatu annoys the crap out of Kapaka, or more like this. Uh, let's say Tao annoys the crap out of Kapaka. Yeah. That's never going to change. Kapaka will always be annoyed, but that's the same way I see it as siblings, where it's like, yes, you'll always annoy me, but at the end of the day, I can get past that because we're brothers. So, keep seeing them as literal brothers. Tahu's obviously the eldest. Kapaka's probably clearly the second eldest. I want to say, like, Pohatu is the middle child. Yeah, that always the baby. No, the Anua's family. the middle child. No, Liwa's... No, well, the funny thing is... Anua's the quiet neutral. Liwa is definitely, like, the baby of the family. The funny thing is, I know in the very, very early Bonneville concept, like, and I think even, like, the trading card game has a bit of blurbs of this, um, is stated that Anua's the oldest and Liwa's the youngest. Liwa being the youngest makes perfect sense. See... When it comes to, if, I, if anyone's got middle child energy, I would say it's Kapaka. No, I, I would still say it's Anua. He's the one who reserves it. He doesn't get involved. He just kind of sits and watches. Now, the, see, the funny thing you say that is because with our family, uh, X, the middle child, and he, the new is his Toa. That might be uh, what's influencing <laughs> this thought here. They do share some personality traits. But it is, like, the just the dynamic of the three main teams of Toa, to me, is one that is interesting because for the most part, it's like they're all just kind of... The Toa Mata don't have any memory before what happened. The Toa Metru didn't know each other beforehand. I mean, I think Vakama might have known Nokama, like, professionally, like, ever so slightly. I know Vakama had done the work for New Jews right, Mask, yeah. but no, Nokama does sound familiar. I think, like, a couple of them were at aware of each other. And then you got the Toa Mari, who are just really tight-knit group. Which is just such a different sort of dynamic of starting as a team of, okay, we already know each other. We, and, yet, and yet they still find ways to get on each other's nerves. 
To be fair. To be fair. To be fair. To be fair. To be fair, they knew each other, but they weren't like close. They were half of them were like the captain of their respectable guards. I would say when it comes down to the ones who are close, it's like Halle, Jala are close. Yes. And then you have like Nupru who's like like I said, they're all Takua's friends. So like I like that as someone who's gone to one of my friends is the hub friend where he's got his larger friend group who I'm a part of, but I wouldn't hang out with any individual one probably by themselves. But we all hang out as a group. You basically took a group of friends and took away their mutual friend. So ah. that they still knew each other, but they never had to hang out by themselves. Now, that would be an interesting experiment, even just for me in real life. To be like, okay, if we, I took out my neutral friend and put the rest of us together for like a whole like day hangout. So you were going to say you want your friend to invite you all somewhere and ditch you. Or you want to <laughs> send someone... You want to send us. out the invites as if he's inviting you. So I, it's just all of you there. I do really wonder what we would do. I think you'd find ways to entertain yourselves. Well, we would never entertain ourselves, but like, I'm ooh, ooh, this is this is this is a social experiment on its own. Like, even just any sort of friend group, you take out like the main because I'm pretty sure I suspect in most friends group there is the main friend that if you take that guy out, like I'm, I'm also there are maybe some friend groups where it's like let's say there's six and you take any one out, you're going to be fine. My experience isn't necessarily well, that. Well, given with you particularly, you're always being going to the same location, so it's the main friend. Yeah, if you take that one out where you always meet and going somewhere else and taking that particular guy out, you're probably... I don't think that is at all uncommon. But like I said, I would love to just be curious to observe it, you know? Be like, okay, what would these people do by themselves? Also, completely just stopping that train of thought, going to back... To total motivations and such, because yes, that was this whole. There's a whole topic that was going to be. But that's fine. Is the only one that I would say that really um uh, explored this or idea of when you become a Toa, how do the Matoran see you and interact with you? Because with the Tomata, they were always Toa, so and they were outsiders either way, so they never was their a their the, approach the, was and the Tomari. You never see them, like, return to Metronui enough to really see how the Matorn, like, Maku or Hafu interact with them. But the Metro, but the Toa in Metro, for a while, you do see how, and for the most part, no one gives a crap that they're Toa. Like, Neri doesn't give a crap. Like, no one, okay, they're all jealous that they're Toa, but no one goes, oh gosh, you're a Toa. I'm so sorry, I'll, I'll behave. Maybe that's because they actually know who they are, opposed to being, it's a Toa, that's, a camera. Oh, not this jackass. Why did he become now, a Toa? I will say this. Before everyone gets on me, I haven't read the books in a long time. So maybe, let's say, when they go to the Anu Koro, um, um, Onu Metru uh, archives of the Matorn, are like, oh, Toa, well, yeah, definitely, go ahead. I feel like everyone's just kind of suspicious of them. Like, Toa, huh? Really? Huh? Yeah. Really? Because, like, when I think of a Toa, I think of these kind of grander beings that if, like, a Toa walks in, you're kind of just like, oh, oh, dear. Ooh. I would say that... Matanui is where they show the most reverence to a Toa. Likon has reverence, but that's not so much because he's a Toa as, well, as, as it is. He's a great Toa. He's a legend in his own time. He's done things to earn that honor. Whereas in the Toa Mata, they were kind of foretold, and the Matoran there really stories, needed it. legends told to them. Exactly, and then they came, and they were there, and they were revered. They were going to save I them mean, from the Makuta. In fairness, though, the Voyanui... The way they treat the Parakas pretty much reverently, too. You know, when you don't have Toa around you, you kind of get the... They were like, they're like Matanui, but instead of good P-Toa, they got the bad Toa. And yes, and they revered the Paraka, thinking they were Toa. So I think it's, a, it's an exposure so is, thing. Is, so is Matanui the outlier of, they don't really treat the Toa with much respect? Again, I'm sticking with the Mat Most of the Matoran they met are ones who knew them personally. Therefore, you know, there's less of a reserve. It's more of a, huh. And, you know... They did have a lot of Toa there one time. They've probably been a little desensitized. So you're saying is that if you become a Toa, for the most part, your relations with your prior, prior friends probably haven't changed much or they irreparably changed because, yes, I might be your friend for now, but if you choose to be chosen to be like one of the most powerful, rare things ever, because let's be honest, let's say your friend wins the lottery, right? Now, you may tell your friend that that's not going to ruin your relationship ahead of time because... You would never think it actually is going to happen, right? It's such a rare one of a million chance. But what if your friend actually did win the lottery? I'll let you know when me or him win the lottery how it turns out. All right, you love me, dog. Like, all I can say is, if you win the lottery, can I have ten bucks? You know what? No, I'll do one. I can give you eleven. 
11 bucks, all the quarters. I don't want 11, but I'll take it. I'll give you all the quarters. Perfect. But, like, because I was thinking about, like, the idea that, you know, like, it's obviously the big example when it comes down to Toa becoming, like, relationship with their one, at least for the, on, the Bible community is obviously, like, Maku and Huki. Yes. Everyone wonders, how does that play out? Obviously, we'll never know because apparently love's not canon, and that part of the story was never really extended after, you know, they became... You know, tell us. So it's like, we don't really know. But it's one of those things I look at and go, and on average islands where, you know, like, getting, having Toa constantly there is a thing. Like, are Toa seen as superheroes? Where everyone's like, you know, fawns or whatever. Are they seen as celebrities? Are they seen as, like, the supervisors? Are they seen as basically as, like, the, like, how do you, how would you see, or do you, or on Manui, do you see them as really more just powerful beings that, like, I'm assuming Matt Nui is the outlier for the, you know, deity kind of look because obviously there were legends told rather than just being, oh yeah, Toa over there. I think Toa would, I would say you see Toa as you'd see a Jedi. I, but Jedi aren't real either. <laughs> they are beings to be respected and they hold a power that we do not. I wouldn't, superhero is a good way of putting it, but like they don't quite feel. It's like a little too much. There's a little. Yeah, and like superhero just doesn't sound right. But. So you're like a celebrity who does stuff. They're a superhero celebrity, Paul. That's what they are. So you like basically as if you let's say you had a local cop celebrity sort of thing. Is that what you're saying? If Spider Man was known to everyone and came in and saved you and he and you all knew who he was, that's who these people would be. Hmm. So it's like, you know, like do do Matoran and Fawn over Toa? Or when the Toa shows up, like, oh, okay, they're here. I think that's all circumstantial. Like, on Matt Nui, they had no Toa. They didn't technically know what they really were. They just knew that they were legends of Toa that could come and save them. And they did. And it was, like, amazing. Whereas in Metro Nui, Toa have just always been a thing. And just near the end of time, there just weren't many Toa anymore. Mm -hmm. One part of the Aspiratory, I guess. And, like, Boy really... Nui, Toa were definitely known. But we hadn't had so many in so long that we finally have beings that can... Stand up to Roddy. Alright, fair, fair. There's a chicken. Okay. No, no, that, that, I guess it's a good way of putting it. But I could just say, it was just with me wanting to get into writing this, my story for my team, just that process of how do you view Chole? Like, how, like, do you interact with the was Just one thing that I was, like, just truly trying to get into ahead of. I think you just gotta commit to how your village will see him. Do they. Revere, or do they not care? If they well, had no one one of the villages I know don't care. Oh, I know which one they are. Not no, wrong like, with that, Morton. If, 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 if it's that hard to visualize, let's just think of it this way. Have they had Toa there before? Recently. Yes, oh. but they kind of died pretty quickly and they were left like with one. But they've had Toa there. So they aren't unfamiliar I mean, with Toa. Don't get me wrong. I know for a fact that um, in the story, you know, one, like they're really... Being, uh, the strings have been pulled so that the Matoran aren't close to them and that they are so they're getting, you know, segregated in the sense where it's like... Then I would say the Matoran accept them, but don't... But I don't know how... But like I said, I don't know how the Matoran... Because that's one part... When I first wrote the book, like all those years ago, they almost never interact with, like, other Matoran. And I'm like, I definitely don't know what the other villagers are like. Perhaps each village is different. Some One might vi revere them a little. The others might just go, are you here to work? Nope. I and mean, then we don't no, care. I actually kind of like that. I actually kind of like the idea that the, the individual villages very much see the Toa differently. Not like individual Toa, just like the Toa as a whole. Because honestly, yeah, okay, no, that 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 helps. That helps. That's 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 enlightening. That's why I'm here. Mostly, yes. All right, this this is a good little chat. I think I like this. A little bit shorter than average, but honestly, I don't know how long I could. I've already said most of what I wanted to say. See, when it came down to on the stuff. thought of writing, I just have, and this is the barnacle aspect. Is it's a very thought, it uh, thought thoughtish out world, but because there's not a whole lot of emphasis on monetary value, it's all about like doing your duty and doing your work. What is what is this? What is the motivating factor for most villains? Like power. <laughs> like you can't always have a new great mask because then it kind of, you don't want to have too many. Great it's masks. all power. Power, but like, how are you achieving this power? Is it just simply I want? You know, I was I was about to say immortality, but I'm like, wait, they're already pretty much all. Honestly, immortal. that kind of I think that needs to be rewritten in some sort of history. But they 
It's like, okay, the Dark Hunters. How do you pay for their services? Widgets? But what do you need money for, really? It's This is the problem with like a lot of um I would say There's no real sense of currency in the Bionicle universe that's really he- emphasized. So the 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 Vortex build weapons, but do they really care about payment? Are they actually paid? I, this the biggest problem with Bionicles is compared to everything else is we don't know what sustains them. Because when you look, for example, with humans, right, it's all about we need to eat food, right? Yes. How do you get food? You give other people stuff. It started with bartering, then it started with money. Everything revolves around eating and living, right? And like, in the you sense go to, of... You go to Transformers, for example, everything's around Energon, but the Transformers do need Energon to survive. Like, yes. they will die there. So, what do Bionicles need to survive? Obviously, the base level is like, for trading, pow- objects of power, so you know, masks. If masks are rare, masks become something to barter with. But again, there's the, this is something I need. What's something you would need also? You need two things. Basically, we don't know what the, the, the root of the economy is outside of, obviously, with the whole way that the man who is treated as a robot, everyone has a purpose of basically running it. So it is all about, it is all about doing you know, it. So the fact that if I would, currency exists is kind of... I would Doesn't keep it somewhat sense. to the barter system, but I would say because we have things like light stones and heat stones... Utilizing things like that, like okay, we I, we I, have. Data. I think what needs to be done is just that one thing in the story that didn't get shown is enough people, you know, having survival issues. You never see anyone hungry. You never see anyone like tired. You never see anyone freezing or anything. It's like sure, well, I'm sure most of these things exist, but it's like it's so pushed to the side that you're trying to wrap around the you know, think... creatures that don't age technically and don't presumably. We know they ingest energy, the but only, it's so vague. The only bit of story that I know of that actually like acknowledges some sort of ingestion of fluid or food to sustain... Monog. No. But that could be it. Monog does have it. Uh, you know, Kapaka's, or Takua's in the drifts, he's, he wakes up, and um, Mator just goes, hands up and says, energy, rest. I think it was heat to keep warm. But my point being, what I was going to say is... It's hard to it, say exactly what But, like, was. to actually suggest that they do need some sort of sustenance was in one of the vo- the first Voinui book when Garen uses his staff to blow away some dirt to find water. Why do they need water? Presumably, water is still something we need to have once in a while. Ah, uh, drinking. Still poor. But I would still say, you know, okay, they're part machines. They probably need some level of maintenance, but... I would say it's like, you know, again, it's like a source of energy, either for yourself or for, like, your stuff, heat, light. Just like, you know, okay, the Dark Hunters. All right, we did the service for you. You have a bunch of light stones. We will be taking those because, well, frankly, we need light. And I like to think things like light stones probably can die out eventually. Oh, I do believe they die out. I'm pretty sure that is. So, okay, then there's a, you need... A there... slow replenish of light. Heat stones. Those, I think, definitely either need to be replenished or reheated. But if you're in a place that needs the heat stones for heat, you can't reheat your stones, so you have to send them off somewhere to be reheated. Basically, of the crux of this is that motivation for survival is just very ambiguous. And, like, yeah, as you'd say, I would say power is a more thing to motivate someone to do something. It's just, unfortunately, if you're paying your operative... It, well, the, thing, the whole thing about power works great for, like, Makuda or... The old least like, well, like I said, once you get to the dark hunters, the idea of see power you, is what you is what keeps your subordinates in line. Because I think a lot of the bio are you paying the subordinates? You aren't. It's I'm in charge. You obey me. You don't obey me. I kill you. It's is this work like that with the dark hunters? Uh, do, you, do you know anyone who could just walk away from the organization? It's hard to say. I mean, but again, that's the dark hunters. I would say that's. No, and of course, there's loyalty. I think because of unity, duty, destiny, even if you're not a Matoran, concepts like loyalty are of asset in itself. If you're trying to be an overlord, you want loyal subjects. So finding people with loyalty, you will probably treat better and thus secure their loyalty, granting you power. Yeah, Bongos are just something that's difficult to write for. I don't find them difficult to write for. I just find the universe has left some 
gaps that I don't necessarily like to fill on my own. Like I said, I don't know. It's, it's, it's tricky at times. It's tricky at times. But, you know, uh, if you guys have any thoughts about any of this, um, I'm looking specifically you at How One and the everyone else, uh, let us know. Um, yeah, I think this is a good enough place to end this. So I've been your host, Omni Mel. This has been the Toll Podcast. And we're retiring from the night.